welcome you to the Wednesday night presentation. Uh, my name is Tom McMurrin. I'm going to be talking to you tonight about OneCoin and uh, joining the evolution, not the revolution. Uh, I want to just kind of give you an overview of this new high tech presentation that we're showing you tonight. Uh, this is cutting edge technology. There's not many presentations out there like it, but I'm excited to have uh, worked with about 40 people that, um, you know, will be, uh, yeah, we got the presentation. The presentation has started, Sherry. So hopefully she can see it, but uh, we are live. I have checked it and uh, everybody should be live, but uh, we're gonna be talking about OneCoin, uh, what it is, what's in it for you and how you can profit from it. And we're gonna be talking about the industry in general. I call this a present training. And uh, it, I think it's important for you to understand the difference. Uh, uh, presentations where we're just trying to sell you something, a present training is where we want you to sell yourself. Uh, we want you to see so much information that you go, wow, this is something I really ought to dig in tonight. And, and really tonight's just the beginning of your journey. Uh, it, it's not something that is going to, um, you know, it's not going to, uh, oh, that's right, folks. I'm not broadcasting on Periscope. So if you're in the chat rooms, could you please uh, put that out? I'm not broadcasting on Periscope. I don't have enough bandwidth. Uh, we have a bit of a storm coming through tonight. So I wanted to cut down on the bandwidth I was using because uh, when storms run through here, uh, not <laughs> I, might, I might not be online very long, but uh, hopefully we will be tonight. Uh, so anyway, if you could post that in the chat rooms, please let people know I'm not broadcasting on Periscope to save bandwidth. Anyway, let's get into it. Hey, uh, we're talking about creating a new economy and a culture of freedom uh, through a digital currency education. And folks, there's a lot of words that you may not know, and hopefully I'll be able to define those for you tonight and give you some understanding of what we're doing in this space but it is the next big disruption and it'll be one of the largest. Some people say this disruption will be bigger than the internet, if you can believe that, okay? You, you think interrupt, inter internet was huge. Um, it's only about uh, probably 20% of the size of the market that the disruption in, is going to happen in this industry, which is the banking and finance industry, the payments industry, everything related to money. So this is a, a very large space. I know there's a lot of network marketing companies go out there and we're in a hundred billion dollar space. So, you know, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, well, we're in about a $3 trillion space. <laughs> you know, we're, in a, we're in a $19 trillion space. So big industry, lots of money. Um, you know, they say, if you, if, if you want to, if you want to make a lot of money, go where the money is. I think that, I think that's what they said in Wall Street, wasn't it? Uh, but um, yeah, that one of my mentors said that. So exciting, uh, exciting to get started tonight, folks. I want to go ahead and uh, kick into the presentation and show you what we're going to be doing. This is a roadmap of our presentation tonight. We're going to be talking about the marketplace, the, the disruptions, the, the, the story of OneCoin, um, the OneCoin story, and then of course, generating income and creating wealth, which I know you all are interested in doing, and the system. And uh, I think it's important to talk about the system because it, you know, doing business from home, not having to run around and do milkshake parties and go around and apply skin cream to people and you know stuff like that. Um, you know, I, you know, I, I think it's much more appealing to talk to people about creating wealth, uh, learning how they can, uh, you know, really be part of the digital currency revolution or evolution, I should say, and uh, make money from home. Like no hotel meetings, no three-way calls, no, uh, you know. Uh, messing around with family and friends, just, just post your stuff and let people see it. And uh, it, it has a, a strong enough lure to it that people uh, will get excited about it and get involved purely on the merits of the industry that we're involved in and the facts that I'm going to share with you tonight. So sit back, relax, uh, get a pen and paper out because I should be creating uh, definitely some questions and uh, you know, it's exciting, but um, we're going to, Let's, let's get in and just kind of click down here on the presentation and dive right into it. Uh, we talk about OneCoin. Uh, we're a company that's less than 12 months old and uh, we're in the digital currency education space. Uh, we teach people how they can be a part of the digital currency industry, not just with OneCoin, but everything that you learn, you're able to really leverage it and make money with digital currency in general. So it's not limited to just OneCoin, which I'm, I'm excited about because it's kind of a, a universal uh, education that will give you the ability to make money. But we talk about joining the evolution, not the revolution. And really what we're referring to is we're moving beyond where we are right now. You know, banking is so antiquated. It's so fee laden. 
you know, it just, there's been no, no innovation in banking really in the last 50 years, except for the credit card. And, and honestly, the credit card really wasn't made for the internet. I mean, you see all the fraud and the issues that they have and all of the, the safety measures they have to go through to protect your data because of credit cards. Digital currency doesn't have that folks. You know, it, it, it's designed for the internet. It's internet money. Um, and, and that's really where we're going, folks. All of your transactions are moving to the mobile phone. They're all heading to the internet. Uh, and, and that's just the way it's gonna be over the next 20 years. And uh, digital currency is definitely on the cutting edge of that. But uh, let's talk about digital currency first. You're probably like, why is he showing me a picture of a 1965 Mustang? Well, I, I found that a lot of people, if they don't know what digital currency is, this presentation just goes right over their head. So I wanna take a minute and do a little bit of training up front. And I wanna to talk to you about kind of what digital currency is. I wanna kind of draw, draw a little example, uh, you know, uh, analogy with, with cars. And um, in 1965, there was 559,451 Mustangs produced. And a very popular car, by the way. No car, by the way, since then, has sold as many as the 1965 Mustang. I don't know if you know that interesting factoid as I was doing my research. The sticker price was $2,395. Heck, you can't even get a good pair of shoes for that anymore. But, um, you know, <laughs> yeah, you can. Uh, but, you know, when you think about, uh, yeah, I mean, you can't take a vacation, a good vacation for that anymore for a cost of a car. But uh, the average price in 2015 today is 10 times what the car was worth brand new. And uh, it can go a lot higher than that if you get one in showroom condition. And, uh, but what was unique about the Mustang, number one, there was only so many of them produced. So there was a finite number of them. See if there was, a, if they had, if Ford had like the Federal Reserve type principles, they would just produce as many as they could. Okay, they just kept producing them and printing them and printing them and printing them until they were worthless. Uh, you kind of see them, they've done that with a dollar. But uh, with Mustang, they didn't do that. They only produced a, a certain number. And so uh, some of those have been in wrecks. Some of them have gone to junkyards. Some of them have been stolen, you know, whatever. But, uh, you know, who knows out of 559,000, how many are actually left. But uh, the, the fact remains that there are a finite number of them. And that's why the price keeps going up on them. And collectible cars have, have, have provided a great return, much better than the stock market over the last 20 years. And uh, it, it's pretty interesting to see uh, people in this space. Um, they're, they're people that make a ton of money buying the right cars and holding them for five or 10 years. But uh, what was unique about the Ford Mustang was each one of them had a unique VIN number, a vehicle ID number. And here's something interesting. Here's, here's the, uh, the parallel I'm trying to draw. Um, with digital coins, there, there's not really a coin per se. It, it's actually a VIN number. It's like a serial number. Uh, but uh, with, uh, with what we're doing, folks, the VIN number, um, there's only so many of them produced. So on a digital coin, there's a finite number of VIN numbers produced or serial numbers. And uh, we'll talk about how that happens later on in the presentation. But what happens is if your community grows and there's a bigger demand for a finite number of VIN numbers or coin numbers, uh, the cost of your coin will go up just like the cost of the 65 Mustang has gone up. Okay. So, and there will be a day where, you know, it, like with one coin, they're producing 2.1 billion VIN numbers, if you will, just to draw the parallel, they're producing 2.1 billion serial numbers. And each one of those represents a coin, which right now has a value of about $2 per coin. Okay. And I, I was fortunate enough to get in about 90, 120 days ago uh, when the coins were at 43 cents. So it's been nice to see uh, the coins that I have acquired through the mining process actually appreciate in value. So it would be like me uh, picking up a whole bunch of Ford Mustangs uh, 30 years ago and sitting on them. And now there's a huge demand for them and uh, people are willing to pay more. Well, guess what? There's a direct parallel to the digital currency space it, because people, and I, and I like using cars because the VIN number, <laughs> when you look at a VIN number, it almost looks like a cryptocurrency number. It's pretty, pretty amazing uh, how long they are and, and the amount of letters and numbers that they have in them. But a digital coin is finite and each coin has a unique serial number. Now there is no actual coin folks. It's a digital serial number. Uh, so calling it a coin is kind of a, a mistake. Um, if the only way you can make a digital coin physical is if you print it out on a piece of paper, 
okay? You get the serial number of it and you print it out. That's how you and cut it in a circle, cut the paper in a circle and you've got a coin, okay? Now, when you think about the coin, um, when you think about a car title, uh, titles have a unique VIN number for transfer of ownership. So it really doesn't matter if you hold the car or not, as long as you have this title, the bank will loan you money. Why? Because that VIN number is worth money. You know, that car is worth money. And so if I have this title and you've countersigned it, but you hold the car, I hold the title, guess who has the wealth? I do. Okay. Uh, and, and so when you look at this, I love the odometer one, 987,000 miles on this one. Um, pretty interesting. Uh, exceeds mechanical limits. I, no kidding. Uh, it's an American Eagle four door car too. Imagine that. I, I didn't never knew an American Eagle car could go 987,000 miles. But uh, anyway, you can see the unique VIN number. This is obviously an example. Uh, but when you print out your car title number on this title, that is a certificate of ownership. Well, when you have an e-wallet with a VIN number, with your serial numbers for your coins, your e-wallet holds the digital coin serial numbers. Okay. So it's just, it's kind of like a certificate of title. Uh, when you own those numbers, you own that value. Okay. And that's really all it is. It boils down to it, folks, is a VIN number is a unit of value. In the case of a 65 Mustang, a VIN number in a 65 Mustang is worth about $25,000 today. Okay. Um, a, a, a coin number with one coin is worth about $2. Okay. So if you have 20, 30,000 coins and it goes up, you know, another $2 in value, you say, oh, wait a minute. How does it go up in value? Well, let me, let me share it with you. Number one, I told you it was finite, right? So there's only so many of them produced. So if there's a huge demand, for your serial numbers, for your, your coin serial numbers, uh, those values are going to go up. So let's look at the next thing. How are the prices of automobiles determined? Well, they're determined by public auctions, okay? And guess what? The prices of digital coins are also determined by public auction. We call it an exchange. And so I have coins, I have serial numbers, or let's call them VIN numbers. I have VIN numbers in my e-wallet right now online. And if I want to go sell some of those VIN numbers for $2 a piece, I can go to my exchange and hit the sell button. And let's say I sell a thousand of them. The company will put 2000 euros in my pocket or about 20, $2,200. Okay. And so the prices of digital coins are determined by public auctions. And that's people that are willing to buy and sell the coins. Now, if there's no buyers, well, the price of the coin goes down. If there's a lot of buyers, the price of the coin goes up. Well, right now, one coin has got 535,000 people in its community and it's growing by 5,000 people a day. Um, you do the math. Okay. Uh, once we reach a million people, we'll be growing at probably 10,000 people a day. And when we reach 2 million people, we'll be growing at 20,000 people a day. Uh, pr pretty simple math, folks, you know, when you look at it, but it's probably going to be exponentially greater than what I've just shared with you. Because as we grow and gain more success, more people that have heard about us that haven't joined yet will finally jump on the bandwagon. And that's when they hit critical mass is when all of the people who heard about it, who kind of blew it off, realize they made a mistake and they jump on it. Well, that's what caused the explosion of the internet and a lot of other companies and stocks and things like that have shot up in value. And so that is just kind of give you a breakdown of a cryptocurrency. Okay. And I, I'll talk about the five components of cryptocurrency, but I, I wanted you to be very clear. The only difference between a cryptocurrency and what I've just shared with you is there's no car involved. Okay. There's, there's really no, there's no tangible asset involved in a cryptocurrency. Okay. So when you look at it, folks, um, that, that's, that's really something that people have to come to grips with. They say, well, I got the dollar. Well, guess what? The dollar has got no value behind it either. I got news for you. Uh, we're upside down. You're actually carrying around a liability. Okay. There's no assets behind the U S dollar. The only thing backing the dollar right now is pretty much the ignorance of the American people. Okay. And I don't mean that in a negative way. I'm just saying, if you actually knew, um, you know, what our country's balance sheet was, you'd be like, damn, we're bankrupt. Okay. Badly. And, and so, uh, I, I was telling somebody the other day, I said, if I had a company that was 9 million in debt and, uh, I had $5 million in assets 
and uh, I didn't have enough interest, enough income to pay the interest on my debt, on my nine million, uh, would you loan me money? And of course your answer would be, heck no, you're bankrupt. Well, if you add six zeros to that, that's the balance sheet of the US government. Okay, so I'm just telling people the, the real facts. I mean, you got to understand that, uh, you know, people in Greece are, are going, gee, wish we would have gotten into Bitcoin a couple of years ago when we had liquidity. And so are the people in Puerto Rico and so are the people in Spain. Everybody's taking notes based on what happened in Greece because currency controls uh, restrict the liquidity of an economy. Now I'm getting off on a tangent here and I better not do that. <laughs> I can do that on market timing. I'm just kind of delving into market timing already, uh, but I should talk about leadership first because that's where it all starts. Uh, we have a beautiful, highly intelligent leader uh, in Dr. Rusha Ignatova. Uh, she is the, the mastermind, the brain, um, and, and the, the workhorse behind one, behind one coin. And uh, I love Wendell Wilkie's quote. It says, education is the mother of leadership. Well, guess what? This is the mother of digital education uh, you know, leadership. This is the woman that is educating more people uh, than, than anybody in the world right now on digital currency. With 535,000 people, we are the largest digital currency community in the world in less than 10 months. And it was interesting. I was listening to one of the, uh, the industry speakers, uh, one of my favorites, Andreas Anton Antonopoulos, speak the, the other day on a video that he did in July. And he said, in the last nine months, there's been a surge of people researching digital currency. I'm like, duh, <laughs> you know, I wonder where that came from came from one coin, okay? Uh, we're already two times larger than the pioneer of the industry and they're wondering who's doing all the commotion. Andreas, we are, if you watch this video, which you won't um, because it's not about Bitcoin, but uh, if you did, uh, it's, it's one coin that's creating all of that commotion. And so when we look at um, some market timing, uh, so the, by the way, this is five compelling reasons why you ought to take a serious look at one coin and uh, uh, you know, Groupon reached a billion dollar valuation, not a billion in revenues, a billion dollar valuation in 28 months. Uh, one coin is projected to hit 1 billion in revenue, real cash revenue in less than 18 months. And I, and I bet I, I, I bet if we could take credit cards, we're doing too much volume to actually take credit cards. Uh, if you understand the credit card system on new companies, um, we're, we're doing too much volume to even get approved uh, for, for what we're doing in we're one of the fastest growing companies in the world. If we could take credit cards, folks, uh, it'd be game over. It'd be two billion in revenue. But uh, uh, all those are bank wires or, or intercompany transfers or whatever, but that's real cash revenue in less than 18 months. And I tell everybody, man, if you knew you had one of the fastest growing companies in the world, the next Google, wouldn't you jump all over it knowing what Google did, knowing what Facebook did, knowing what you know, Yahoo did? you'd be all over it, you know? How would you like to have bought Cisco stock at $2 per share? Okay, if you don't know who Cisco is, we'll talk about that in a minute. But look at the market timing, folks, okay? We're riding the coattails of, of Bitcoin. I mean, what an exciting run from 10 cents all the way up to $1,203. Um, I was fortunate enough to get in at, 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 uh, at um, $7 and got out at 438. My $500 investment turned into just under $30,000 uh, in just a couple years. And when this came along, <laughs> I, I added a zero <laughs> and then I multiplied it times five. I said, you know, I'm going to go into this one a little bit bigger than I did Bitcoin because uh, we're already bigger than Bitcoin. In less than nine months, we were larger than Bitcoin's community uh, that took them seven years to build. So it's kind of a no brainer folks. I just said, you know, Hey, um, I, I, I put money into dumber things, but this one to me is a highly intelligent, um, you know, focused uh, effort on what we're doing. And I'm really excited about it. But, uh, you know, when you look at just what's going on in the world, Greece defaults, a country defaults on its loan. <laughs> um, Citibank is creating their own digital currency. Okay. So you're like, Oh yeah, digital currency is a scam. Yeah, exactly. That's why Citibank is actually developing their own cryptocurrency. I don't think so. Okay. Um, how about this? Oh, I, I love somebody who goes, oh, digital currency is a scam. I go, yeah, that's why a first world country like Australia Senate just recognized it as a currency. So yeah, I, I don't think it is. And uh, you know, you look at this folks and, and how popular is one coin on the internet. We are in the top 
half percent largest websites in the world already. So I, I don't know how much proof you need that you're looking at one of the hottest companies in the world that has hit the internet in a very long time. I, I've been in the internet for 20 years, folks. I've never seen a company reach the top half percent in less than 10 months. Okay. And what an exciting time for us um, to be involved. I mean, we're, we're bigger than every network marketing company in the business. Okay. We're bigger than Amway from a website traffic standpoint. Um, it, I mean, Herbalife, you name it, all the large ones that have been around for 30, 50 years, we're already bigger than all of them. Okay. In, in less than 10 months. So I don't know what else you need to know, but that, that's a pretty strong factoid right there. That came off Alexa.com. Uh, I don't care what company you're involved in. Uh, you can go research it right now and type in your company's website address. And I will bet that chances are uh, your company's in a 30 to 45 degree slide right now because all of the leaders are coming over to OneCoin. Why? Because, well, we're making a lot of money. Um, technology, and I'll cover that here in a second. Technology is the third reason why people should take a serious look at this. Um, uh, kind of an authority, isn't he? You know, Bill Gates, would you consider, I mean, to hear Bill Gates say that Bitcoin is the techno force of technology, um, Bill doesn't know about OneCoin yet, <laughs> but he's going to hear about it. Okay. I'm sure somebody's got a relative that's going to go, Hey, Bill, you heard OneCoin yet? And he's going to go, yeah, I'm already worth $60 billion. I don't care. Um, but uh, you know, when you look at the complexity of Bitcoin, therein lies the problem. The average person can't understand it. And that's where they've made their mistake. Being a first mover in the, in the space, they've done a good, good job of proving the model but they've done a terrible job of making it simple for the average person to be able to access a digital currency and use it on a daily basis. And, you know, compensation would be a, another reason to take a serious look at our company. Now, I just, as a disclaimer, I'm going to tell you to go to onecoin.eu and read our uh, compensation statement that's on, at the bottom, the, all that fun legal ease print you can go read, but I want you to know it's available for you to read before you make any decisions about this company. Um, we have over 310 people that are on track to make 2 million a year um, in the first 12 months. If we had a millionaire club and tried to put them all on stage, that stage would probably collapse. Um, we, we have over 25 million in commissions paid out in, during the weeks of August, and that number has been increasing. Uh, so 25 million is more than most companies do in a year in revenue. Okay, so I think we're doing okay there. Um, like I said, we're on we're on target to be one of the fastest companies in the history of the world to do a billion dollars in revenue. If we do a billion in revenue, that means over 500 million dollars is paid out in commissions to our sales force. And that's, uh, that's phenomenal. Okay. I went the wrong way there. Here we go. Um, so the system, uh, we have a online marketing system. In fact, you're sitting at home, hopefully in uh, comfortable clothes with your shoes off and your got your feet kicked up in the lazy boy and you've got your iPad sitting in your lap. <laughs> it's like, somebody's like, dude, are you looking at me right now? Um, no, I can't see you. But uh, I know some of you are doing that. Some of you are sitting on your back porch with a, a glass of tea and some of you are sitting, uh, you know, laying in bed with a cocktail. Um, you know, some of you are driving down the road and listening to this. But the great thing about this is you can do this business from anywhere in the world. Uh, we don't need any hotel meetings. Okay. We don't need to leave home and spend time away from our family to do that. Uh, now we are going to do a hotel meeting, uh, October 16th through the 18th, but it's going to be at the Red Rock Resort in Las Vegas. And I got to tell you what, if you have not seen the Red Rock Resort in Las Vegas, this place is exquisite. It's awesome. And that's where we're all going to get together as a big team and have a great time. And uh, like I said, I am doing a meeting tomorrow, but it's not at a hotel. It's going to be at a real estate office in Nashville. And I'm looking forward to seeing everybody up in Nashville. Uh, you know, a mentor of mine who built three multi-billion dollar financial services organizations said, run the system and let the system run your business. Well, if you have invited people to watch this presentation, you are running the system uh, because the idea of you going to a, a Starbucks and sitting down with somebody and trying to do everything that I'm doing for you right now uh, would be ridiculous. That's not duplicatable, but sitting down and watching a presentation at home, I'd have to say that's highly duplicatable and that's what we're all about. So those are the five compelling reasons why we want you to take a serious look at what we're doing. Let's take a look at the marketplace. Who are you? That's what I want to know. 
Okay, are you a first mover? Are you the type of person that likes to be on the cutting edge? Uh, do you want to be the one way, way in front of the wave? You're not, you're not afraid to paddle for a little while on your own. Okay, well that's where we're at right now in the digital currency space. Um, maybe you're a dream seller. You know, you like standing on stage and evangelizing stuff and and and, and sharing, spreading the dream all over the world. Uh, we have that opportunity right now. And I'm excited about this new presentation because this presentation is designed for the dream sellers that want to go out there and educate people on digital currency because that's what we're doing. We're teaching people how to profit with digital currency and that's where the fun begins. Maybe you're a wealth creator and you say, Tom, I don't want to build a team. All I want to do is gain access to coins at a very low price and I want to watch them appreciate in value. Uh, for example, think about Litecoin. Right before the Greece crisis, you could have bought Litecoin for $2 per coin and it shot up to over $10 per coin during the Greece crisis. Okay, well, that was a pretty significant wealth building opportunity. Okay, and even Bitcoin went up from $220 all the way up to $320. So it was fun to see that type of growth. You don't, you don't see that type of growth in the, in the stock market. And uh, so that makes it fun. But if you don't want to build a team, you can become a miner and you can mine coins just like anybody else and you can make really good money, but you don't have to have computers or anything like that. We've got it all handled for you. Now, maybe you're a prepper. Well, I'm a prepper, okay? I live on a 300 acre farm. We've got cattle. We've got a lake for stocked with fish. Uh, we've got vertical gardens. We've got solar. We've got geothermal. We've got wood burning fireplaces. Um, <laughs> You know, it's, it's pretty crazy what we put together over the years, but I will say uh, if the world collapses tomorrow, we will be selling tickets at our front gate. <laughs> so maybe it's a future income opportunity and we can turn it into a network marketing company. What do you think? Anyway, no, I'm just joking, but um, it, it's a heck of an idea. We might have to map it out. But uh, anyway, uh, the prepper is somebody that says, I just want to be prepared. I want to plan B. Okay. Now here's the guy I love. And I know a few of these people. Uh, they're the ones that are pounding their fist on the ground that the world is collapsing and uh, gold is coming back and uh, buy gold, buy silver. Okay, so that's the doomsdayer. Uh, they like cryptocurrency, but they prefer physical assets because they think finite assets are the way to go. And what they don't understand is cryptocurrency is a finite asset and it's more portable than gold. It's more, it's more of a currency. It passes one of the attributes of currency. Uh, which gives people the opportunity to carry your your digital currency around on your mobile phone. Try and do that with a gold bar. <laughs> Try and get through customs at the airport with a gold bar. Woo! You're going to get an exam there, buddy. Um, anyway, then there's our last, our favorite person in the whole world, and that is the is this the scam person or the person that says this is a scam? If just rearrange the words, um, you know, this is the person who's basically uh, that they're ignorant. They don't know what digital currency is, okay? They don't have an education on it, but they wanna be an authority on the fact that it's a scam. And these people I don't understand because if they knew who was involved in this industry, they, they wouldn't be saying it. And after this presentation, uh, you'll get to giggle at people that say this is a scam. Okay, you'll go to bowling league and say, I'm getting into digital currency. And some of your bowling leagues are gonna go, hmm, I lost money on one of those things. It's a scam, okay? Um, <laughs> how many internet companies in, in 91 were launched all the way up through 97 or 2000 where people lost money and somehow the internet's still not a scam. It's, it's one of the greatest money making opportunities on earth, uh, the internet. And, uh, so, uh, the, the, this is the scam type person. Um, you just need to go, wow, you're really ignorant if you're saying that, because after this presentation, you'll see what I mean. Okay. So the, and by the way, I, I did have a, and everything is a scam person. One of my last meetings and I sat through about three quarters of the meeting, got up, got out. And I said, Hey, thanks for coming and giving me a shot at it. And he goes, I'm sold. He goes, I love this. <laughs> I laughed. I, and he was definitely, this is a scam type person, but uh, let's talk about the six disruptions. Okay. So I don't know what kind of person you are, but let's see if we can start breaking through some of the education and help you understand why you're at the right place at the right time. Uh, why you should recognize you're there and be willing to pull the trigger, okay? Because when these types of disruptions come along, they, they, they change life, they reshape human culture. Disruptions create trillion dollar business environments which reshape human culture. That's a pretty significant statement, but I think after you see what I'm about to show you, you'll, you'll totally agree. But uh, let's look at 
at um, TV, the technology of TV. Do you recognize any of those brands? Well, you know, some of those brands weren't around 20 years ago, okay? Uh, some of them weren't around 30 years ago. Uh, and when you look at it, I think Survivor's been around 20 years, something crazy like that. But uh, people live vicariously through this technology. But think about all of the industries it has disrupted. Uh, when it first came out, people complained, why do we need TV when we can see people live? Those were the people that liked going to the theaters. But uh, all of a sudden, you could see theater on TV and ticket sales and theaters dropped and you know, theaters went out of business, okay? Until they figured out how to advertise to get people to the theater. Um, you know, and so TV, a uh, major disruptor. I mean, just I, I could have put thousands of logos on here that you would have recognized because of TV, just all the sitcoms, shows, networks, um, man, everything could be on there. Um, the internet. Okay. That was a scam. Basically in 91, the internet was a scam. It was for pornographers. It was for pirates. It was for hackers. Uh, if you got on the internet, you were a little weird. Okay. And uh, yet all of these logos, I bet most of you recognize all of these logos. Uh, Cisco, it's not Crisco. Cisco is a internet, uh, a internet company that provides routers and things like that. One of the greatest performing stocks in, in the history of the stock market, Oracle, uh, Adobe, IBM, Google, uh, you recognize a few of these names. At one time before the internet, these logos did not exist. Now IBM did, but we know Google did and we know Netscape did and Microsoft really, really didn't. It did, Microsoft did actually in the 80s. Um, but uh, when you look at it, folks, uh, this internet technology created uh, multi hundred billion dollar companies and they were just at the right place at the right time and they learned how to ride the wave. And that's the goal of our presentation tonight is to show you how to how to ride the digital currency wave. Now, the Internet, there were companies that said they would never put their companies on the Internet because they were afraid their data would get stolen. OK, well, today, if you're not on the Internet, you're not a company. OK, and so adoption Internet was one of the fastest adopted technologies in the history of the world. Now, look at email. What did email disrupt? Oh, by the way, what did uh, what did the internet disrupt? <laughs> Everything. No, primarily publishing companies. Um, you know, the internet d disrupted the music industry. Uh, there's a lot of things that the internet technology disrupted. And, and I think Napster is a really good example to bring up with the internet because Napster was a music sharing website that broke the value chain of the music industry. And uh, companies like EMI and RCA and, and uh, Virgin, I mean, literally went out of business in five years because of the, the internet and what Napster did. Now, Napster ultimately lost their court case, uh, but uh, because they were a first mover, they didn't really know what they were doing, but they totally decimated the music industry in less than five years. They lost their lawsuit, they had to shut down. And, uh, but guess what? The music industry was dead on arrival at the courtroom. Even though they won the course, they lost their industry because they didn't use internet technology to adapt. They just didn't do it. And I've read lots of books on it, uh, on, on why the music industry didn't uh, didn't adapt. And um, it's just pre pretty amazing. Uh, I, and I'll give you a little tidbit. One of the greatest books I've read recently is called Disrupt You by Jay Samet. So if you want a great book, uh, it gave me a lot of ideas for this presentation, but uh, Disrupt You is about breaking a value chain of a company, of a industry, or even a country. Uh, you look at what happened in Egypt, um, their value chain got disrupted by a kid with a Twitter account and a blog, and he ended up having more credibility and authority than CNN did, okay? So when you look at the internet, uh, what a disruptor. Let's move on to email, pretty simple. What did email disrupt? I mean, I remember when I sent my first email, my, my wife was like, oh, somebody's going to steal your information. Somebody's reading your email. She, she just didn't. She's, we're opposites. <laughs> I'm a first mover. She's the last mover, um, you know, period. And uh, she's, she's kind of a doomsday sayer and, uh, and probably part, uh, is this a scam? Maybe not. Uh, she gets educated. Once she gets educated, she, she, she comes on board. But uh, I'm definitely the first mover in the household. Uh, maybe your household is the same way. So the email industry disrupted the postal industry and courier industry. If you think about it, uh, the U.S. Postal Service was once the most profitable, only profitable division of the U.S. government. And today it's losing, what, $80 billion a year. And they're trying to figure out what to do with it. So email was definitely a disruptor. But again, when it first came out, 
people are like, I'll never send a message over that email. It, that, that's a scam, you know? And uh, there's always that, that, that's a scam person is always out there. Oh, email's a scam, you don't want to do that. Um, and then of course, how about e-commerce? How many of you said, I'll never use my credit card online. I'll never buy, I'll never buy a pair of shoes online. Bam, Zappos, <laughs> you know, uh, I'll never buy, uh, you know, books online. I'll just go to bookstores. Well, there's no more bookstores left anymore. Um, you know, and, and then you look at PayPal, 181 million members, PayPal, you know, people thought that was a scam when it first came out, you know, that's what made it so funny. It was like, everything was a scam until it became a billion dollar company. And then everybody said, oh yeah, I invested that early on, or I was part of that early on, you know? Uh, no, you weren't, you were the one running around saying it was a scam, but, uh, eBay, you know, there's an interesting one. And by the way, the Pez container story is false. I found out that's not true. <laughs> if you know the eBay story, um, they said they started it because his girlfriend wanted to sell Pez containers. That was not true. Um, they, they don't know where that story got started, that urban legend, if you will. But uh, how about mobile? Well, mobile has disrupted just about everything. Uh, <laughs> people's driving habits more so, the more recognizable. Um, but uh, when you think about mobile, man, uh, what a disruptor. Uh, you know, from from just I mean everything delivery. I mean, the, the mobile has disrupted everything. You know, and and uh, look at the companies that were created. By the way, a lot of these logos were like no name logos. You didn't know who they were in the beginning. You know, and uh, Android and BlackBerry and companies like that. How about social media? Think of this technology and all of the multi billion dollar companies that social media has created. And this br this brings me to an interesting. Uh, place and, and I, I want to jump over to something I don't have included in the presentation um, and I want to talk about you know oops let me hit present again there we go and I want, I want to talk about you know first and second mover advantage um, first mover advantage there really is no first mover advantage in technology and, and I think it's very important for you to understand this um, Napster uh, took the uh, took the the fist on the chin. Um, iTunes came along, and capitalized on it. Um, CompuServe in the beginning was how you got online, along with several other companies, MindSpring and, and Netscape and uh, several other companies, where you had to put in very complicated gateway numbers and, and IP addresses and all of that. And uh, it, it was interesting because uh, I, that's how I used to get online. And then America Online came out. And my wife just, she looked at the internet like it was horrible, okay? And it, it was no good. And then AOL came out and I plugged in a CD-ROM into the CD, uh, the external CD on my laptop. And because they didn't build them in at, at that time, by the way. Um, and, and all of a sudden I was online, didn't have to punch in any fanci fancy digits. All I needed was a username and password and I was online. And of course a credit card number to pay for my internet service. You could do bank drafts back then, by the way, you could send in checks back back then, by the way, uh, which I thought was pretty funny. Um, so America Online came out and had second mover advantage because Steve Case looked at what the rest of the industry was doing wrong and he fixed it. And there were CD-ROMs in every freaking magazine you picked up off of the, of the stand. They, they probably printed more CD-ROMs than any company in history. Now think about Bitcoin for a minute. Bitcoin has suffered some, some of the same CompuServe syndromes. Okay. Very complicated, very, very hard for people to understand, um, very technical. And all of a sudden here comes Dr. Rusha uh, with one coin in her CD-ROM, if you will, uh, her, her completely integrated online system that anybody can figure out how to use digital currency, how to use digital currency in their lifestyle. And so there's a huge advantage. And by the way, there's a whole bunch of companies. I mentioned Napster and iTunes. Um, I mentioned CompuServe and America Online. Um, you know, you think about the movie industry, how about uh, Blockbuster and Netscape and, you know, Netflix. Uh, think about that disruption and, and Redbox, you know, uh, I said Netscape, I meant Redbox. But uh, think about that disruption. And that's a powerful thing for you to think about. Um, Picture like over a thousand ATM machines, Bitcoin ATM machines were just sent to Greece. And I want you to pretend if you know what Redbox is, it's the movie kiosks that are outside of the uh, most of the convenience stores. But uh, envision Redbox as a Bitcoin ATM machine and envision Blockbuster video as the banks. People are going to realize that they don't need to go into Blockbuster anymore. 
Okay, they're going to realize they don't have to go into banks anymore because they can do everything on their phone and everything through an ATM machine and they don't need those 15, 20,000 square foot fancy marble banks anymore. Instead of spending money on marble, maybe they could put money back in our account for holding our money. Well, you know, that's never going to happen. Okay, that's just not going to happen. Um, so I thought that was pretty interesting. You know, when you talk about first mover advantage, how many of you know who, what the first social media network was that was really popular and Facebook cleaned it out? Uh, it was Friendster. Okay. Friendster got wiped out by Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg looked at what they were doing wrong and he turned up the heat and created Facebook and Friendster and MySpace vanished. Okay. A, a little speck in the rear view mirror of Facebook. Okay. And that's basically what one coin is doing right now to the Bitcoin industry. Um, they're becoming a spec in our, in our rearview mirror because they're so focused on the blockchain, which I won't even get into that, but uh, they're, they're not focused on really what it's about. And that's giving people the freedom to transact business in a non governmental issued currency, you know, in a non fiat currency. Yeah. I, I want to transact business in a currency that is not laden with, what 15 trillion in debt, you know, I, I'm not interested in that. Okay. So let's go in and take a look at what we call the seventh disruption. So those were the first six disruptions and look at the trillions of dollars that was generated from those disruptions. Now, as I mentioned, a disruption is where you break the value chain uh, of a company, country or industry, and you attack a value chain that is crucial to its existence. Okay. Now, if I told you that the, 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 the value chain of the U S banking and finance and money sending industry has been attacked, um, in a very vicious way. Um, I, I'll tell you the Napster, which would be Bitcoin in this case has totally cleaned house on the banking industry and they don't even realize it yet. And I'll explain why that is in just a minute. But the seventh disruption is the digital currency evolution. Okay. Um, it's where the Kenyan farmer from a mobile phone can buy seeds in Sweden because he's connected to a digital currency account and he can send money to buy the highest yielding seeds. You know, he can sell his crops in another village because he knows that they need the crops and he can sell his crops where he gets the highest dollar. It's where, um, you know, where Greece is uh, completely wiped out. Their liquidity is gone uh, because of the, the, really the gross mismanagement of the country uh, and the banking system uh, and, and the overall government. Uh, they bankrupted Greece, okay? And so when you think about that, um, what a time for an evolution. What a time to move beyond where we are because obviously what we're doing is not working. How about all of the colleges? Did you know that Stanford University, one of the premier colleges in the world, teaches a digital currency class? like CS 51, 251, I think it is, but you can look it up. But Stanford University uh, teaches cryptocurrency already, as well as several other Ivy League schools that are now teaching it. So if the universities are teaching it to the smartest kids in the world, do you think it's part of the agenda of the powers to be? Well, I would think so. Okay. And uh, so when you look at that and then look at, look at what's going on in Puerto Rico, uh, not Puerto Rico, um, in um, Ecuador, uh, that's Ecuador's flag, right? Yeah, that's Ecuador. Um, but Ecuador, I have too many countries in my head, um, that Ecuador has issued their own digital currency. So isn't that pretty amazing that a country has already issued it? Uh, Australia has recognized it, you know, um, Ecuador has issued it. Uh, it's pretty amazing what's going on. Uh, the Isle of Man is very, very pro uh, Bitcoin and digital currency. So the the, the future unicorns, and if you don't know what a unicorn is, it's a, it's a billion dollar company. It's what the tech industry calls a billion dollar company. Um, these are your future unicorns. These are the biggest players in the space right now. Mastercoin, Ripplecoin, Litecoin, uh, Purecoin, uh, Dogcoin, Onecoin is a major player in the industry. Namecoin, I mean, there's just so many. And there are hundreds of coin companies out there, folks. It's the ones that figure out how to get distribution and how to build an economy. Those are the ones that are going to succeed. Okay. And one coins leading that charge right now. So you can't really talk about 
um, digital currency without talking about our pioneers, Bitcoin. And by the way, I'm a huge Bitcoin fan. I own it. I use it. Um, I love Bitcoin. It's just, it's not for the average person because the average person's not going to understand it. Uh, it is a lot easier now than it was in the past, uh, but it's still a little bit intimidating for the average person. But here's a guy, Satoshi Nakamoto. We don't really know if that's his name or who he is, if that's his picture, but that's the one they always post. Um, supposedly some anonymous guy uploaded a white paper to the internet in 2008, and he said, I can conduct a financial transaction without the need of a middleman. Did you hear me? I can conduct a financial transaction without the need of a middleman. Okay, middleman is synonymous for banks. Uh, it's synonymous for anybody who charges a transaction fee for moving money. So he could eliminate that whole industry. Well, guess what happened? The whole industry laughed at him, okay? They, they could, did, did not believe that he could actually do it. Well, a few months later, he published a software that now 40 million computers around the world run that software, and it's the largest financial transaction network in the world that does not have a middleman, okay? And it's it's very similar to Napster in that every everything runs on everybody's computers. So if the US or Mexico shut it down, it would continue to run. As long as there's one computer running somewhere in the world, everybody's balances will be on that computer and that computer will be available to verify the transaction that you have the money that you say you do and you're paying it to the person that you say you're paying it to, okay? So it's pretty interesting when you think about that that's the value chain that just got cracked. The banking industry's main value chain just got cut with bolt cutters all the way through. And Bitcoin has proven the model. Today, 150,000 businesses accept Bitcoin. You're like, what? Yeah, absolutely. 150, some of the biggest names, you'll be very surprised when you see the logos of the companies that accept Bitcoin. It also was the number one producing investment in the history of the world. I mean, when you look at this, folks, um, how about this chart? How would you like to be a part of that growth? Okay. That's a nice, that's better than Cisco's by the way. And they're one of the top performers. But, uh, when you think about, uh, the opportunities here, here's a, and Bitcoin, by the way, is not a company. There's no central management. There's no audits. It's a completely decentralized, um, it's a decentralized coin. There's, there's no, no centralization. The only way to stop Bitcoin is to shut down the entire internet. And even then the smart people will create mesh networks and use their mobile phones for internet. Uh, you, you can't stop it, okay? There, but there's only 250,000 users worldwide and it's about a three or $4 billion market cap organization. So it is bigger than most US companies if it was a company, but it's not. And uh, it's, it's all over the place. Uh, lots of companies are starting to adopt it. So let's compare our notes to your guy at your bowling league or your friend who's a CPA uh, who thinks they know more than you do and, and they will act like they do or your financial planner uh, who says, this is crazy. I ran into one of those the other day. Now, m mind you, this is high risk. Okay. D d don't, don't, don't fool yourself. It's a brand new industry. Any In industry, the internet was high risk in 1991. It was high risk all the way up through 2000 something. It's still high risk. Okay. But guess what? Risk is the prerequisite to wealth. Okay. Repeat after me. Risk is the prerequisite to wealth, okay? No risk, no wealth, all right? So, you know, you just have to figure out what your risk tolerance is and you have to decide how much you wanna be a part of this industry, okay? Um, would I instruct somebody to put all their life savings into digital currency? Heck no, <laughs> it's not that kind of industry. You know, personally, I put about 3% of my net worth into digital currency, but I'm going to be not only putting money into coins, one coins, but also Bitcoins and Litecoins and dog coins. I have a diversified strategy of what I'm doing, but I believe in the industry and I want to support the industry. But how about Michael Novogratz? He personally invests, personal, not fun money, personal money. He puts in, he runs a $55 billion fund, Fortress Investments. Okay. You guys have heard of Al Gore? You know, here's a guy that has very positive things to say about digital currency. Um, I don't know if you know who Peter Thiel is, but he founded a small company called PayPal, co-founder. And uh, he says, I do think Bitcoin is the first encrypted money that has the potential to do something like change the world. <laughs> Pretty powerful statement. You know, Ashton Kutcher right there, he invested in a company in Atlanta, a, a, a bit uh, BitPay, I think it's called. And uh, how about Mark Andreessen, runs one of the largest technology funds in the world. 
And by the way, you don't have to put your glasses on. His picture is fuzzy. I got to change that. Um, but he says this will change everything. OK, that's a pretty powerful statement. Um, how about uh, Eric Schmidt, the CEO of Google? OK, uh, he may be past CEO, but I think he's still involved. But uh, Bitcoin is a remarkable cryptographic achievement and the ability to create something that is not duplicatable in the digital world has enormous value. OK, I don't exactly know what that means, but it sounds powerful, right? Um, then how about uh, Dr. Rusha Ignatova? Digital currencies will create peace, reduce poverty, and will make transacting business more affordable for the masses. Well, that's pretty cool. When you think about it, why would it create peace and reduce poverty? Well, six billion people in the world do not have access to financial services. And it is proven where there's no access to formal financial services, violence and poverty is part of the culture. But when you bring in organized financial services, violence and poverty decreases. So maybe digital currencies are the ultimate weapon of peace, but guess what? The banking industry does not want to serve the other 6 billion people. They only want the billion people are the people that have the wherewithal. They don't have to deal with people that only have a mobile phone, but don't have any paperwork or any uh, nationality. Uh, they don't want to deal with people like that, but that's where all the violence and that's where all the poverty is coming from. So let's look at the five components of digital currency. You've got an algorithm, okay? Now an algorithm is a mathematical equation that creates a VIN number or a coin number, okay? So let's say our equation, just for simplicity's sake, for every time you come up with the answer five, I'm gonna produce a serial number for a coin. So one plus four equals a serial number for a coin. Two plus three equal. So how do you figure out these equations? Well, you gotta have a mining operation. Those, that's a large server room, bunch of computers, you don't have to have it. We've already got it in place for you. But uh, the mining operation figures out the equations and unlocks the coins, okay? So to get into mining, you gotta have some form of uh, tokens. We give out tokens to you with your educational packages and that gives you the ability to go mine coins, okay? Once you've pulled some coins out of the mathematical algorithm, which you don't have to worry about how, you know, there's a great guy, uh, Carl Weld up in, in Tennessee. He said, I don't know how a brown cow eats green grass and produces white milk and yellow cheese, but it just does. Okay. And so you don't really have to understand how the mining operation extracts the coins from the algorithm. But I can tell you this, the mining operation is like a calculator and the algorithm is like mathematical equations. And every time you figure one out, you get rewarded with coins. Okay. Boom. They go into your e-wallet. Now, uh, if you want to sit on those coins and let them appreciate in value, you can do that. And one day, if you want to sell them, you can put your coins on the exchange, take them to the auction. Okay. And whatever people are willing to pay for them, you can sell them for that price. So let's say you mined your coins at wholesale, let's say 43 cents, like I did back in May. And I wanted to sell them today. I can sell them for about $1.84. That's the going price of the coins on the exchange. Okay. When I sell coins, they put cash in my account. Okay. Now I can use that cash just like any other cash. It's real cash, real money. It's not, not, it's not monopoly money. Okay. So when you look at that, and then of course there's the blockchain, which most people don't understand, but it's just a public ledger that knows the balance and it's, it's a transparency. It's every transaction that the company does is listed publicly. Okay. So your account number, if I tell you, I've sent you 501 coins, um, it's going to show up on the blockchain. You'll actually be able to see that transaction go through. Okay. If there's not millions of transactions going through that day, but, uh, you'll be able to actually verify the transaction by looking at the blockchain. Okay. So those are the five components, the algorithm mining operation, uh, exchange, and just to elaborate on mining a little bit, um, mining is, is for people, the, the golden opportunity is to become a miner. Okay. It just like it would be, uh, would you rather own a, a jewelry store and get a 10% markup on the jewelry you're selling? Or would you rather own the mining operation where you can mine the gold and sell it for a two or 300% markup? Okay. So I like getting stuff at wholesale and selling it at retail. Okay. So I prefer, I like buying the raw materials and selling them to the people who want to create the wholesale product. Okay. So I even like being one step below wholesale. And, and that's really what mining is. It gives you the ability to get in at a better price than everybody else. So when you see a company like OneCoin that has a mining opportunity, your ears should perk up. 
okay? Because there's three ways you can get digital currency put into your bank account. You ready for this? Write these down. Number one, you can accept digital currency as a retailer. You can be a merchant and say, I accept one coin or Bitcoin or Litecoin. I accept digital currency payments, okay? Uh, or you can go to an exchange and you can buy the coins directly. That's the second way you can acquire digital currency. The third way you can acquire it is by mining the coins, okay? And mining the coins means you get them at wholesale and when they hit your e-wallet, they're probably already at a retail price or higher than what you got them on your mining operation, okay? And that's really why you wanna become a miner. Right now, like with Bitcoin, uh, a laptop, if you had a laptop and you wanted to mine coins, it would take you about 3,000 years to produce any coins, 3,000 years, okay? So you gotta have a massive server room to do mining with Bitcoin anymore. So that opportunity for the average person is gone, okay? And uh, so those are the five components of digital currency. Now, you know, when we look at the new economy, folks, Australia recognized, you know, Bitcoin as a real currency. Uh, you got uh, people doing trading operations, trading it just like they do stocks and Forex and stuff like that. So there's trading opportunities with uh, digital currency. Um, PayPal accepts Bitcoin, okay? 181 million people now can use PayPal uh, for Bitcoin transactions. Um, Bitcoin ATM machines are popping up. These are the red box of the movie industry, folks. The more and more Bitcoin ATM machines get based around the world, the, the lesser need there is gonna be for banks. You know, banks ignored Satoshi when he first published that letter. Then they laughed at him. Um, now they're starting to figure out maybe it's not a laughing matter. We're in the laughing stage right now but eventually they're going to start fighting the industry and by then they will have already lost because Bitcoin and digital coins and digital currencies are proliferating all over the world right now and the banking industry's whole foundation is turning into sand faster than they ever could have ever imagined. And uh, you'll see this in a very big way. They're gonna try and legislate it. They're gonna try and uh, block people out, but uh, guess what? They can do that all they want in the United States. They're not doing it around the world. OK, uh, they're going to watch the banking industry implode here in the United States just because they're too stupid to get on board and understand the power of digital currency and not having a government controlled currency. OK, uh, and, and I got news for you and, and mark my words on this. Um, uh, and and I, I think it was Rothschild. Actually, not to mark my words. Rothschild said it. He says, give me the power to print the money and I care not who creates the laws. <laughs> you know, pretty interesting. Um, but uh, how about this? I mean, look at the look at the companies that accept Bitcoin. Uh, recognize Amazon, Microsoft, PayPal, Tesla, United Way, Fiverr, Victoria's Secret. I didn't know that. I'm gonna have to go spend some there. Um, Etsy, um, Overstock for my wife, of course. Um, for <laughs> not for me. Um, for WordPress, uh, you know, Reed Jewelers, largest jeweler in the United States. Uh, how about Cheapo Air? Never used them, but they take Bitcoin. CVS Pharmacy, I've been to CVS, 1-800-Flowers and Dell. And what I tell people to do is go set up a Bitcoin account tonight. Go to coinbase.com or go to blockchain.info and set up a Bitcoin account tonight. Go buy a tenth of a Bitcoin, It'd be about 25 bucks, and go spend that at one of these places, okay? Um, and, and make your first digital currency transaction. I think that's very important. I think that people need to do a digital currency transaction. And when you do it, let's say you buy flowers for somebody you love or you make a donation to United Way, you'll realize you just made a transaction outside of the banking industry, outside of a government issued currency. Um, so it's, it's pretty strong, folks. Um, I love it. A guy just emailed me, says, how's one coin going for you, buddy? Going really good. You ought to be watching my presentation right now. Um, but let's talk about the one coin story. And, and uh, I think I've got about 30 more minutes left in me, folks. So we're going to go about 90 minutes total. So hang in there. Uh, we're going to zip through this last part. We've only got, uh, what, three more sections. Um, but here's Dr. Rusha. Okay. And this is, to me, the most important point because this is where we get into leadership. Um, doctorates in law from Oxford University, master's in economics, associate partner at McKinsey. By the way, McKinsey only hires the top 1% of the class. They only enter, I'm sorry, they don't hire them. They only interview the top 1% of the class. They hire less than those. Um, she has a master's in economics. Uh, she is an associate partner at McKinsey and Company. 
uh, Entrepreneur of the Year in Bulgaria two years in a row. Uh, she's a former CEO and CFO of one of the largest asset management firms in uh, Bulgaria. Uh, and so a very accomplished woman, okay? Um, she's been on the cover of Forbes magazine. It was a brand voice magazine, but guess what? Before Forbes puts you on the cover of their magazine, you think they might do a little bit of a background check on you. They're going to do a little bit more than Google your name. Okay. <laughs> they're going to do credit checks. They're going to do criminal checks. They're going to make sure they're not putting somebody on the front of their magazine under that iconic logo. So all of the critics that are online saying the Forbes magazine's not real. I bet most of those critics don't even have the credentials to get on the cover, much less the money to pay for the advertising to even qualify themselves for it. Okay. Um, and then below you see a picture of, uh, of Dr. Rusha winning the entrepreneur of the year in Bulgaria. Um, uh, just a very accomplished woman. I, I've also heard she has a high Q high enough, high enough to put her in Mensa, uh, which makes her super, super smart. That takes about three Georgians. <laughs> I didn't say Alabama. I usually say Alabama. I got in trouble for that, but three Georgians cause I live in Georgia, so I can say that, but, um, can't pick on Alabama, especially their school system. Um, Arkansas, uh, I think is only next to them. But anyway, we'll get off that topic. Somebody from Alabama is fuming right now, but I love Roll Tide. Okay, I just redeemed myself, didn't I? I love Roll Tide. Um, but in, anyway, uh, one concept. Let's look at our one concept and what we're doing with one coin. Uh, we are selling educational packages, folks. We're not selling coins, okay? We're not selling investments. Uh, these are educational packages that give you the ability to learn how to profit from digital currency. And each one of these packages ranging from free, that's right, you can set up an account for free. Um, you can go and check out the whole back office, learn all you want. We got no secrets, nothing to hide. Everything's back there that we say that we that it's back there, okay? Um, and uh, we don't have a cryptocurrency leader. We don't have a crypto leader. Our, ours is very public. Some of these crypto companies you get into, oh, we can't tell you who our, our company's owner and name is, or we'd have to kill you. You know, I, I just can't do that. You know, that he's top secret. Uh, yeah, he's also running off with all your money too. <laughs> but uh, our leader is very public and has a lot to lose uh, and is highly credible. And I, I just tell people, um, even to get audited, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but just to get on the cover of Forbes magazine, uh, probably most people I know don't even have the credentials to get on the cover of Forbes magazine, much less be able to afford to pay for it. But uh, let's look at uh, Pro Trader, all the way from Trader to pre Premium Trader, $12,500. Got some people like those comments. How about that? How about them apples? See, I got a whole bunch of thumbs up on that one. Um, but anyway, uh, looking at the different educational packages, those are, are available. Now, each one of those packages comes with tokens, which enable you to get into uh, mining. And, and remember, I said where there's a mining opportunity, there's gold to be discovered. Okay. Um, there's oil in those hills. Just think Beverly Hillbillies. Okay. When you find a mining operation, Think Jed clamp it, okay? Because that's what it's all about, folks. It's about getting those coins at wholesale and selling them at retail. And that's what Jed Clampett did. He got the oil at wholesale because he went to go mining, drilling, and uh, he found a way to sell it to people who wanted to pay a higher price for it, okay? So I kind of equate what we're doing to Jed Clampett and the Beverly Hillbillies. Uh, we have that same opportunity. Now, when you get your package, we want you to go into your back office and we want you to pass all of your courses. We want you to start learning. Okay. That's what this company is all about. We've got a whole bunch of courses back there, very comprehensive trading program. Um, then after that, we want you to set up your one pay wallet, your e-wallet. Okay. Yes, we have all this fully integrated into one platform. And when you're done with that, we want you to go mine your coins. We want you to go put your coins into mining. If you see in the right hand corner, you can do trading, you can do mining, you can look at the blockchain. We got fun and games in the back office, planning tools, statistics, news, all kinds of great stuff, okay? And so a very well organized website, very intuitive, very easy to use, very easy to see. I love how sim simplistic they've kept it. Um, and then uh, I get lost in my Charles you know, Schwab account. I can't figure out where anything is, but this one's, I like the big, you know, I like the big boxes with the colors and stuff. It kind of reminds me of granimals and stuff like that. But uh, I, I can get around this website and uh, the average person can too. So you can see in this one, wow, this person's got over 20,000 coins. Oh, that's me. Um, but uh, yeah, what an opportunity, folks, to, to go in there and trade. You want to trade and buy some tokens? You want to buy some coins? Do you want to sell some coins? It all works, folks. I've used it. I have sold coins. They put money in my account. Okay. So it does work. 
uh, for <laughs> your opponent say it doesn't work. It does work. I have done it. I'm putting myself on the line right now by saying I have done it and I've done it several times to test it uh, on a, a couple different accounts. So we also have an Arum gold coin that's coming out. We're excited about that. That's 0.99 for you gold bugs that are telling everybody the sky's falling. You want to buy gold. We are going to have your product 0.999 gold, uh, a, a 15 gram gold coin. I think it's about 700 bucks or something like that. 0 0.001 of that will be cryptocurrency. So it will be a gold backed crypto coin. Isn't that cool? Very innovative. Uh, we also have the World Foundation. I mean, you look at what Tom's has done and you look at, uh, you know, the different groups around the world. You look at Zappos and Tony Shea and what he does. Um, our company is a big believer in giving back to the children and giving them the foundation to learn about today's economy and really how they can protect themselves and hedge themselves against what they got coming because it's, it's ugly out there for our kids. Uh, and then Coinbase, uh, we do have an online fully licensed uh, gaming site, not available for US citizens because it's not legal here. So you won't be able to access that. I think you can play the free chips. You can't play for paid, paid money, but uh, it actually is a product where people can buy gambling, uh, gaming credits and uh, the commissions are paid through that. And, and so it's pretty interesting. Uh, we have a large Asian population that loves gaming and loves gambling. And so we have a very high end a uh, very nice gaming site for people that like like to game. I'm not a gambler, but some people are, okay? Um, so let's go in and talk about the comp plan real quick, generating income and wealth. We're on the last two legs, folks, so we're wrapping it up here, but uh, this is where we get into the fun stuff, okay? Now, when you go out and sell one of our educational packages, you get a 10% direct sales bonus, okay? So if you sell a, a 12,500 euro program, you're gonna make about $1,400. Okay. If you do it in the first month, you're going to make an additional 10% that's going to go into your trading account, which will allow you to buy more coins. Okay. So you'll pick up another $1,400 uh, in coins. Okay. To be able to go out and buy coins. That's exciting to be able to right now. The name of the game folks is to get as many coins as you can. Okay. That's the name of the game. Then we have a network bonus. We do use a binary compensation plan. So if you're familiar with binaries, uh, you have a right sales team and a left sales team. It's a two by two type matrix where you can only put in two and then everybody else you put in has to fall under those people. And then what the computer does every Monday is it calculates unlimited levels deep, how much volume your right sales team has done, sorry, right, and how much sales volume your left sale, uh, team has done. And whichever one does the lesser, that's one you're gonna get paid on, okay? So if this one does 50,000 and this one does 100,000, un remember, unlimited levels deep. So as your team continues to grow, um, your volume is going to grow. Okay. Now, if this team does 50 and this one does 100, you're going to get paid 10% on the 50,000. Okay. They're going to deduct 50,000 from this side, deduct 50,000 from this side. So you're still going to have 50,000 in volume in the bank over here. Volume does not flush. Okay. So uh, it will count towards the next week and, and so on. Okay. So pretty cool stuff, folks. Um, the binary is a, a very powerful, uh, very powerful compensation plan. Um, the network bonus uh, can caps out at 35,000 euros per week, uh, depending on what level you come in at. Okay. So if you come in at our trader level at $500, uh, you multiply that times seven. And that means your comp plan is capped at 3,500 a week. If you come in at the thousand dollar level, your, your income is capped at uh, 7,000 per week. If you come in at the $3,000 level, 3,000 euro level, your income is capped at 21,000 a week. Um, if you come in at the $5,000 level, you're capped at 35,000 euros a week. Okay. So depending on what level you come in, we'll cap those bonuses. Now here's something real important folks is our matching bonus and it's very powerful, but at our tycoon level, which is the $5,000 level, you get four levels of matching bonuses, 10%, 10%, 20% and 25%. So you get 25% on your fourth generation. That's really strong, folks. That's where over half of my check is coming from. I've heard upwards of 60% of your check comes from these matching bonuses, okay? So depending on what level you come in at unlocks those bonuses and it's real important, folks. And you can upgrade, by the way, common question we get is can you upgrade? And the answer is yes. Uh, you don't pay the difference of the packages. So it's a whole new package, okay? And then if you look at uh, the, only, the only thing you have to do to qualify your binary income is to have a trader package on the right and a trader package on the left, okay? I got news for you, heavy rain just came in, so I don't know how long my internet's gonna stay up, but um, 
let me go ahead and just flip through this and get through this as quickly as I can. And uh, so we can wrap it up here. But um, lifestyle rewards, very simple. It's like a frequent flyer mile program for all the success you have in your organization and your business. They will give you points and you can uh, you can use those to uh, to redeem them for trips and fancy gifts and things like that. Now, uh, we also have pins and promotions and things like that. So you get to uh, start off at your, uh, your, your Ruby level and you move all the way up to Emerald, uh, Blue Diamond, Crown Diamond, Black Diamond, trips, air books, um, all, all kinds of great gifts that come with our pin and a recognition. Uh, another way of creating wealth is obviously through trading, but it's important to understand that we have an audited blockchain. Uh, Simpra Fortis is our auditor, uh, top five auditor firm out of Europe. Um, I think this is interesting to note. If you want to know, you can go to xcoinx.com and see the market capitalization of the top 10 cryptocurrencies. And you will see that one coin is number two already. And very quickly, as our coin grows in value to over, say, say, I don't know, seven dollars, uh, will probably be larger than uh, Bitcoin and have the highest market capitalization of any um, any uh, uh, company out there. Uh, we also have splits coming up, two for one splits on our tokens. So the tokens, if you get your tokens today um, and purchase your package immediately, we do have a split coming up in the next probably five or eight days. And uh, that'll give you the opportunity to double your tokens, which will increase the number of coins that you can mine. So it's very important if you're looking to make a decision, you need to make one ASAP. Okay, so uh, xcoinx.com, uh, everything audited by Simpra Fortis that should make you feel comfortable. And every month they uh, they do an audit and uh, it adjusts the book value of our company, which of course adjusts the value of our coin. And they verify that the transactions that the company is doing, uh, they're definitely doing them. So it's nice to know that we have an audit. Now we have great events, folks. I mean, what an exciting time, uh, to, you know, Dubai. 3,000 people showed up. There was only about 20 Americans there, but uh, just wanted to give you a, a little overview of that and see if this works for us. Might be using up too much bandwidth with this rainstorm coming through. So I think I'm gonna skip the video tonight, but we have a Dubai video that's embedded in here and I'm gonna move on to getting started. I um, think it's important, folks, to realize that we are about lifestyle design. We're about family, personal growth, service, community, travel. I mean, that's really what we're, we're about. So if you're looking for a company where you can create wealth to enhance these areas of your life, um, there comes the video. Now I got to go find it, turn it off. There it is. Let me just go backwards. That's cool. And uh, if you weren't able to see it or hear it or wanted to see it again, of course, you can go to join onecoin.us, J-O-I-N-O-N-E, coin, 
www.ghostbusiness.us and you can see this presentation. We do have it hosted there. But uh, let me just wrap it up here. Again, I was talking about lifestyle design when that video kicked on. And uh, to me, that's what Tim Ferriss is all about. I mean, we do a business because we want to live a certain lifestyle. And uh, if you're passionate about wealth and creating wealth for you and others, this will be a great company for you. Uh, we have an awesome system, of course, a three-step system where you listen to, a, say, a sizzle call or a four-minute video, and then you get to see a company overview like you're watching right now, and then have an orientation call to determine what package is best for you to purchase. We keep it real simple, folks, okay? And, and we can answer all of your questions. Uh, it's just an exciting industry to be in. But uh, three of the principles that we live by, the automate, duplicate, and create, uh, we do have a, an awesome, awesome marketing system. Uh, go into that in a greater detail. But if you say, hey, Tom, I want in, uh, very simply, let me tell you how to do that. Take action by gaining education and awareness, okay? Uh, purchase a OneCoin digital education package. Become a OneCoin miner. Uh, set up the OneCoin marketing system and then share the one coin story with your friends and family. Get, let them know what we're doing and let them discover it through our three-step system. Now remember, we're not in the convincing business, we are in the sorting business. So if you're not the type of person that's cut out for this, we just wanna make sure we weed you out up front because there's so much opportunity here, there's so many people looking to create wealth right now. Uh, we believe we're at the right place at the right time. Uh, we just hope you recognize you're there as well and you're willing to pull the trigger, okay? But uh, exciting having you online tonight, folks. I know we ran a little bit over, but this was the first time publicly doing the presentation. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it opened your eyes to the digital currency business. I would encourage you to get back with the person who invited you to see this presentation, get with them and get your questions answered you know, and start gaining education, start watching videos every day on digital currency and start learning about this exciting industry because it is the next trillion dollar industry. It is the seventh disruption and we'd love to have you join us on this journey. Have a great night, everyone.